the epistle on this third Sunday after Epiphany is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brethren, be not wise in your own conceits. To no man render evil for evil. We provide good things not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as far as in you lies, be at peace with all men. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if thy enemy is hungry, give him food. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing, by so doing, thou wilt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, At that time when Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. Behold, a leper came up and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And stretching forth his hand, Jesus touched him, saying, I will, be thou made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See thou tell no one, but go show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a witness to them. And when he had entered Capernaum, there came to him a centurion who entreated him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying sick in the house, paralyzed, and is grievously afflicted. And Jesus said to him, I will come and cure him. But in answer, the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy thou shouldst come under my roof, but only say the word, my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, and have, <clears throat> and have soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following him, Amen, I say to you, I have not found such great faith in Israel. And I tell you that many will come from the east and from the west and will feast with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of a kingdom will be put forth into the darkness outside. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hadst believed, so be it done to thee. And the servant was healed in that hour. Those are the words of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. the the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Paul James Bentz. We uh, have in this Gospel today, two striking examples of faith in Jesus. As so often happens in the Gospel, the faith is on the part of people who are outcast in the Jewish society. The first case, a leper. Leprosy was widespread and dreaded in the mid ancient Middle East, not only because it's a loathsome disease, but because it's seen as a special chastisement from God for certain sins. This chastisement is, uh, for the sin would, uh, and the affliction would make you unclean. You would be unclean because of the basis of it, of the affliction was thought to be sinful against God, a serious sin. And, uh, uh, so that meant you were excluded from the community, especially community at worship, or to put it in modern terms, you were canceled. So the, we note that the leper does not ask Jesus for a cure. He asks him to make him clean. 
make him clean. And, uh, and that's why, because that was the priority, uh, that was the main priority for, even for the lepers was to be able to rejoin the community. There was division there. The leper's faith shows that he already knows that Jesus has the ability to heal. The question that he has is, do you, Jesus, will that? Is that what you will? And Jesus' response to the faith and the humility shown by the leper is greater than expected. God always outdoes us in his generosity with us. He heals he heals the uh, body of the leper, and he touches the leper. The leper is supposed to be untouchable. He had a duty under the Jewish law to not allow anyone, or not to accidentally have anyone touch him. And he touches him. Um, it, this incident shows us because of Jesus' divine power. When he touches him, Jesus does not become unclean. Rather, the leper is cleansed through his healing. Secondly, his touch welcomes the leper back into the society, uh, into the worshiping community. In other words, he heals divisions. God's love heals divisions. We note that it's through sacred, Jesus' sacred humanity same humanity that we receive in Holy Communion, that Jesus heals with divine power. The second outcast is the centurion and his sickly servant. These are uh, Roman pagans who were hated uh, by the Jews, not only because they were pagans, but mainly because they were their conquerors. And uh, so he was the enemy in the eyes of most of the Jews of the time. And uh, his humility is shown uh, in so far that he, instead of summoning Jesus to him, which he could have done as a local ruler, he comes to Jesus. And Jesus' statement, I shall come, could be translated to mean Shall I, parentheses, a Jew, come to your home, home of pagans? So Jesus is pointing out the divide as a charitable reminder to the centurion not to cause himself trouble, either by inviting, him, by inviting a Jew to him or uh, by uh, causing trouble for Jesus either. It's clear that Jesus is ready to cross that divide and go follow him home. But only at uh, in it, the informed invitation of the centurion. So this shows us Jesus' humility. He doesn't want the centurion to get in the middle of something that he wasn't banking on. Centurion's inspired answer shows not only faith in Jesus' divine power, but the same humility. Uh, the uh, centurions only say the word and my servant will be healed. The centurion is not specifying, we should note, how the healing must be done. Another sign of his humility. How often do we pray to God and ask him for things and ask him this and this and this and this? You know, want it this way, want it that way, don't want it toasted, want, you know, all these different details that we specify. Uh, we should state our need and leave it to the Lord. He knows what to do about it and when to do something about it. So uh, Jesus' ability to heal from a distance is an even greater sign of his divine power. And uh, we can note again that sincere experiences of faith and charity on our part always lead to an even greater response from God's goodness. Love begets more love. When Jesus speaks of many from the East and the West, he's using an Old Testament expression, 
which was originally used to refer to the Jews returning to their homeland after the exile. They were scattered by these various empires all over the place, and they would come from the east and the west, from all over, back to Jerusalem. Jesus now applies this expression to the Gentiles entering the kingdom, kingdom uh, which had been up to that time uh, the Jewish people, is, and we know now is the church. And those who were among the Jewish people, at least for that time, most of them would not enter. They would refuse to go that way. Father Gabriel says, love overcomes the barriers arising from people's circumstances, sicknesses, the apparent sinfulness, political divisions, economic divisions, racial divisions, but everyone is a child of God. The real love, uh, that is the agape type of love, a self-sacrificial universal love, overcomes evil, especially divisions that come from others. <laughs> also our division of, from God, and also the divisions within ourselves that we, all of us, struggle with, at least from time to time. We look at St. Paul's letter and it, it addresses the same thing. If a Christian returned evil for evil, and he's speaking in this particular context about the relationship with non-Christians, then that would be an admission that evil had won over good. Evil must be answered and conquered by God. Now, I always loved that image of the hot coals. You know, you, you forgive and you help your enemies. It's like putting hot coals on their heads. I mean, that's, I find that the meaner side of me, which is most of me, finds that very appealing. But that's not what he's talking about. The hot coals is an image for the remorse, uh, the, the shame that somebody would feel when they have love return for their expressions of hatred. Uh, Father, um, Father Monsignor Boylan says that in vengeance there is neither manliness nor greatness. St. Augustine said, Against the violence of charity, the world is powerless. I wish I had said that. Against the violence of charity, the world is powerless. This is more than just a metaphor for better behavior. This kind of violence of charity is present to us at each and every sacrifice of the Mass in the worthy communion that we receive. Let us to be violent in this sense in exercising the full power of God's love that he gives to us. May God bless you. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.